Your conference is being recorded. Okay, so welcome to um, this month's session, and it's all about the factor combinations and why they matter. Um, so I wanted to do, we did a factor review last month, and I wanted to get a little bit into the factor combinations. So for those of you who have been through a full two-day PI training or possibly even a, a, our sale or a, a People Smart Leader one-day session, um, you've learned about these. If you haven't gone through one of our sessions yet, um, some of this may be new for you, and for those of you, some of it may be review. But I want to, we'll go kind of high level of what each of the factor combinations are. And then what I want to talk to you guys about is why we use them, why they matter, and some really useful places um, in your usage of the predictive index tools to really note the factor combinations. And again, um, we are being recorded. You're more than welcome to ask questions for those of you that are joining in. But I wouldn't, uh, if you would, please mute your line unless you're asking a question so we can avoid the background. Thank you. All right, so starting us off here, um, I like to, I love cartoons. <laughs> I think they're a good way to kind of learn about things. Um, one of the equalizers for all of us is procrastination and rationalization. Um, so we're not going to find the key to why you procrastinate or why you rationalize inside these factor combinations. Um, I just love the fact that PI really gives us a lens to see why people do things, not that people do things. Um, and that's been kind of a theme that's been coming up lately is that all of us can have the same propensity. We all have patience for some things and lose patience for others. Um, we can all be free in our communication sometimes and a little bit more guarded other times. So, um, but the ultimate um, equalizer is our procrastination and our rationalization and understand that all the skills that you learn, we're all still gonna kind of do the same thing. But these factor combinations are gonna help us understand why one person procrastinates and why a why a different person um, procrastinates or rationalizes. So it's a, a little funny to get a stop, start stop there. All right. So factor combinations. For those of you that this is fairly new, um, there are six factor combinations in every pattern. So all patterns have six combinations. Um, some of them are going to be easier to see. So with the one that we're looking here, you know, a little bit crazy patterning here, um, as you can see, the black lines that get drawn, a lot of the people, a lot of people sort of stop there and say, oh, yep, this one has three factor combinations. I just want you to kind of expand beyond that and understand that every single pattern has all six of these. And all six of these actually will um, interact with each other as well. We're not going to go down that rabbit hole today but just understanding that they do um, all. I'm going to go ahead and just mute everybody. If you do have a question, feel free to put it in the, the... The leader has muted your line. To unmute your line, press pound six. Um, so for this particular pattern here, we can easily see that AV combination. That was one of the first ones. And then the BC, right? So that's that widest combination. And then the CD, that's sort of that um, almost Z pattern there. Now, I've put in in colors, so red, we've got that AC. That's an important one as well. And then that AD, very important one, and we're going to look at that, what, what indicates there. And then the BD. So hopefully you guys are starting to kind of see that even if there isn't a line drawn between them, there are the six combinations in each and kind of how to figure that out. Um, if you do have any ever problems with that, you know, you just reach out to us and, and we'll help you out with that. All right, so we're going to start today with this AB. Um, what the AB relationship is all about is whether it's task or people orientation. Um, and this is really going to give us an indicator of how we both receive but process information, how we process our information, how we communicate that information, and how we interact with people. So whether we're more of a people-oriented or relationship-oriented, or if we're more task-oriented um, or transactional. So here's a little layout um, of exactly the two sides of things, right? So when we have an A that is higher than the B, 
Now, I want to point out here, when I'm defining these, I'm defining them as if they were crossing that midpoint, right? Um, these are still going to be true if they're both on the same side, but just a little bit different. It's going to be modified a little bit. So understand we're really defining these as if one is on the high side and one is on the low side. The relationship still exists if they're on the same side. So I'm going to go back to my example here, like in the case with our, B, our A, B relationship here, right? Our A and B are both on the high side, but the B is higher than the A. So what we would call this is a B over A relationship. Okay, so that B over A, I'm going to start in the right-hand column. I'm going to mess some of you up here. So that right-hand column, that B over A, that's our empathetic and social communicator. These are people that connect quickly, and therefore they actually delegate, um, depending on some other things, pretty easily because they trust quickly. You know, you're on their team, they trust you, here, go ahead and take this. And remember, it's, that's a lot to do with that low A. So if that A is crept onto the high side, that's going to be a little bit harder there, and again with the D. When it comes to problem solving, I'm very collaborative, um, very team-focused here. This is your, your ultimate team player, high B, low A. They talk things through with others. So when they've got something going on, if they've got a problem they need to solve or a project that they're working on, it's really important that they be able to talk that out. So this is something to know, um, especially in the hiring process, you know, understanding that if you're looking for a job that is an A over B job, what is going to be the difference if we just switch that orientation around, right? So this person now needs to be able to talk out their learning and talk out their problems because they socialize their information. When it comes to decision making, they really like consensus. So they're going to kind of um, survey people. They're going to go to their, their group or their hive and, and see what other people think. Now, again, some other factors are going to come into when they ultimately decide how that's going to work, but they likely solicit input from others and weigh that however much they weigh it. But they are very much people-focused in that decision making. They're going to solicit advice. The flip side of that, right, so the inverse is our high A, low B, the left-hand column here. So these people are more transactional. They're task-oriented. So their communication is going to be pretty direct. Um, it is very sincere, however, so just understand that there's a, a sincerity to the, the way that they communicate. Um, when they're under pressure, they may be blunt because they've got that kind of direct, we've got a task at hand, I'm focusing everything on that task, where the people on the right there are focused on the relationship more. When it comes to the delegation of especially authority, not so much details, details are, we're going to get into that in a minute, um, are, are really more about the authority. I kind of like to hold on to things. I don't trust people as quickly. So I'm going to just hang on to this until you prove your trust to me. I find it a little bit hard if I don't know you and you haven't proven yourself and if my name's on it especially. Um, when it comes to problem solving, I'm not going to go, I'm not as likely to go search for other people. I'm going to kind of put my head down and put an analytical approach, a little more internal, introspective. Um, when I do make a decision, it likely is more on an individual basis. I've made this decision through my analysis, um, and then I'm going to tell you what I've done. Okay, so again, if all you take away is that, that task versus people, so high level about what these are each about. So this is going to influence our communication, our delegation, authority, problem solving, and decision. So next up here, we've got um, the AC relationship. Now, the AC relationship is all about task and how I approach doing things. So when it comes time to do something, how do I do it? Um, this can be really helpful in looking at when you're onboarding a new employee or um, if you're hiring for a role, if you're creating that job target, right? Do I need someone who is going to pick up the ball, be independent, and go ahead and run with things, or do I need someone who's going to be more like, okay, wait, I'm responsive, I'm going to think things through. So as we look at the picture here, I'm going to start on the left-hand side, our high A, low C. And again, these are as if they were crossing that midpoint. I'm going to change a little bit if they're both on the same side. Um, if I have a high A and a low C, right, high dominance, low patience, 
I am a change agent. I am proactive. I'm going to drive things forward. I like pressurized situations. The more pressure, the better. I'm pretty confident in myself, and I'm driving things forward, so I have a positive response to that. I adapt easily to change, and in fact, I, I sometimes, depending on how wide that spread is, and if you guys remember, the more you pull those two apart from each other, the more intense all of this is going to get, right? So the further or the, the wider distance in the spread of these combinations, the more intense all of this becomes. So if I have a very widespread A over C, I may even break things just to change them. <laughs> like, well, let's try something new here. Um, I'm very decisive, proactive driving. In my listening, um, I do so sparingly. I find it pretty difficult. For me, I want you to just get to the point, land the plane, what do you need to tell me? Now, flip side of that, um, I'm responsive. So when it comes to that pressurized situation, I kind of want to mitigate it. Um, if I'm in something that's really intense, I, depending on a few other things, I may either go into overwhelm or I'm just going to be a little more cautious. Like, hold on, let's pump the brakes. Let's get all the information. Let's look where we need to go. So when those big changes come, and especially changes that I've not initiated, changes from outside of me, I need some time to warm up to them. And I really need to understand what's happening, why, what's the plan, and how does this affect me. So when I come to take action, I'm a more thoughtful action taker. So instead of careful there, um, I, I really should have put thoughtful and responsive, where it's more about, like I said, slow it down, look at everything, where are we going, what do we need to do before I just jump into action here. And because of that, I'm a very thorough listener. It's not my agenda that I'm driving forward. I really want to get to, to see the whole picture here before we jump into action. So I'm going to listen thoroughly and understand what's going on first. So really important to understand this in your hiring, um, to know whether if you need that driver, that person that's going to just kind of pick up and drive things, or if you need more of that kind of equalizer, that stabilizer. Um, the stabilizer is the high C, low A and the driver is the high A. Okay, moving right along. Speedy overview today. AD, um, and if any of you have ever done training with me or any kind of trainings with me, you know how important the AD conflict, or the AD uh, relationship is. Um, and with this one, it's really about what level of detail inside of the information I need. This is all about how I assess risk and I make decisions and what kind of encouragement I need and how to give me feedback. So this is really a lot about the feedback as well as encouragement. So our high level here is all about whether I'm comfortable with risk or cautious with risk. So starting on the right-hand side, can keep flipping you guys around, making sure you're paying attention. Um, if I have a high level of formality, high D, low level of dominance, low A, I'm someone who wants to mitigate and protect against risk. So I'm actually going to look for risk where I'm going and do what I can to mitigate that. Um, I can be somewhat worrisome or at least I would say concerned. Someone who is, is um, diligent looks through it with a critical eye to make sure that we're made, that all the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed, and we're not missing anything that can kind of come back and bite us in the, in the butt later, right? So when it comes to decision making, I'm going to be more careful here. I'm going to get all the information. I'd like as much detailed information as possible. And again, I want you to remember, this is when one is high, one is low, and as we pull them apart, it becomes more intense. So the need for rules for me is very strong, and not only rules, if this one, the information here is I need clear information. I listen almost literally. So when you're speaking, I'm, I'm listening for the information. Um, I need to understand what the rules are and where I fit inside of them. This is someone who sees things fairly black and white um, and that there is a right and a wrong. And again, as I mentioned, it's that that good way of, of seeing things through the critical eye. So you want someone um, in this who's 
if you need to make sure that everything's right, that things are precise, that there's accuracy, that they're they're ensuring there may be um, a four-eye review, great here. Left-hand side, again, we're looking in opposites, right? So they're little mirror images of each other. Um, if I have high dominance, high A, low formality, low D, to me, risk is opportunity. Bring it on. I love it. It's fun. I love being on the bleeding edge of what could happen. Um, for me, making mistakes, having it be precise, not a big deal. I can screw up, get up, start over again. When it comes to making a decision, I'm quick. They come fairly easily for me. I don't need a lot of detailed information. I just need enough to kind of trust my gut and move it forward. If we need to make another decision later, we make another decision later. Not a big deal. So when it comes to living in the rules and the process, um, I really need minimal understanding of the rules. I just need to know the big ones to keep me out of trouble, right? And I kind of see rules as suggestions anyway. There's a little bit of creativity in there for me. I may not follow everything exactly to a T. Um, and again, depending on the win, because this is someone who likes to win. So I'm going to follow those rules that are, are, are in my game that make it possible for me to win. But outside of that, I'm going to get creative on how to get there. So I tend to be a generalist where my, my inverse here is the specialist. Really um, influences the perception of risk. So this is all about risk tolerance and decision-making because we make decisions based on how we tolerate risk. One to note here is that um, every little tick of movement with these matters. So those are the big three. Those are the three that you're likely going to have as almost non-negotiables, especially if you're setting up your um, job targets and you're comparing candidates. I would say that these three, the A, B, AC and AD relationships would be the three that you would look at most. And then filling in with those are our BC, which is all about whether I'm quick to connect or slower to connect, um, whether I, you know, build relationships quickly or I'm a little bit more reserved. Again, has to do with the listening of a thoughtful listener versus a fast and enthusiastic communicator. Um, whether I'm more reserved and my ideas might not come up as, as readily, I need a little time to analyze and think about things, I tend to be a deep thinker, versus I love a brainstorming session, kind of want to pop ideas out. This one tends to be less of an indicator of, um, tends to be not as much, especially in the hiring process, of like our non-negotiable. This is just really good information to understand when it comes to, to connecting and that processing information, um, how quickly am I going to do that? How quickly am I going to connect to you? How quickly am I going to warm up to the group? How much time do I need inside of relationships to build them? And how much trust I need to put there? So a lot about trust in the communicate and, and connecting with others. Also about working with groups. Um, if you try to put someone who's in our left column here, the high B, low C, in an independent role, like, you know, in an office by themselves with no one to talk to, they're going to wither on the vine. It's just not going to work. Um, conversely, if someone on the other side, you want them to be out on the road and in front of clients and talking to them all the time, not really going to work. So. Next up are um, BD relationships. Um, so this one has a lot to do also with um, how I, I share my thoughts and ideas, um, how I process my information, and when I, I share it. Um, this is, if you've got any kind of virtual learning uh, or, or virtual officing and setup, um, the people who are high D and low B, right, the one on the right here, it is very hard for them on audio-only virtual calls um, to participate especially if there isn't any prep work for them to know exactly what it is they're going to be needing to share or they're not a subject matter expert so that they can freely kind of answer questions. This is one that we run into um, on why it matters for sure is if you're hiring people to work remotely, understand that your people on the right here are going to need a lot of prep work and some follow-up to be able to get their ideas out. Um, it's true in regular meetings, too, in an in-person. 
um, but we tend to miss the nonverbal communication that happens, kind of agreement or nodding or um, that happen in a room together. People that are built the inverse of that, that high B, low D, are happy to talk. They're talking ideas out all the time. They're big picture. There's kind of no filter. Everything that comes to mind kind of comes out of the mouth. Um, again, they're not only processing out loud, but they're also not afraid of getting it wrong. It's, you know, there kind of is no right and wrong, and they're just going to bounce ideas out there and maybe forget they even said them. Versus the other side really needs that time to process and doesn't want to get it wrong. They really want to put the effort in to make sure that it gets right before they speak it out loud. So just understanding this is a big one when it, for group dynamics um, and, and meetings. This is really important in meetings to understand how people are built and how they participate um, in team and group sessions. And then finally here, we have our CD relationship, um, which is really all about how I approach the rules, whether I'm a little more casual or a little more careful. Um, the one thing I like to think about this is that the people on our right here, high B, low C, um, can kind of go from zero to 60 when something's going wrong. They're going to get, like, really fired up about getting it done right and getting it done right yesterday. So if there's something going on that may prove that things are going to be wrong or outside the rules or that kind of stuff, a sort of structure and detail and precision as well, not just rules. Um, they're going to, you're going to feel that intensity. There's going to be an intensity around that. Um, the rules are to be followed. There's a little literal interpretation of them. Again, I need that clarity and that structure, but um, there can be kind of a, a heatedness around it as well. But they also push and drive um, accurate, precise work very quickly. Um, the left-hand side, a little slower, a little bit more free with that structure. I don't need a whole lot of structure, and I, I kind of, the timing, you know, we're going to get there. This is a very persistent combination here. So um, I don't know when I'm going to get there, but I know I'm going to get there. I may not hit that deadline, but I'm going to stick with the project until the result is achieved. So this is someone who may, you know, push deadlines a little bit, but is always going to finish the job. Other side, going to finish that job uh, come hell or high water, and I'm, I'm going to be fiery maybe while I do it. So really good in understanding when I'm taking action with um, information. And this is all about with a project, right? So when people approach project work, two very different ways of looking at how do we get this project done. Um, do we kind of take all of our time and look at it creatively and find new ways of doing it? Or are we under the gun and it's got to be perfect? And sometimes, you know, each of those are, are the right situations. So that's how those combinations would look at things. So I sort of flew through all of that there, and we'll pop back a little bit. Um, I do want to show you here, this is the factor combination toolkit. This is available to you in Catalyst. So if you, you know, from your, your dashboard, that bottom right-hand tile there, you just type in, factor combination toolkit, or even just factor combination, and this is going to come up. So you don't have to remember all of this. Um, there's a good reminder in the system for you on what each of these mean. As I mentioned, we talked that the um, AB, AC, and AD relationships are probably the three most important. So I'm going to come back to our slide here. Um, the reason for that is those tend to have the biggest impact on workplace behaviors. So one of the places we're getting into the kind of why it matters, right, um, when you're creating your job assessment and you're hiring people or coaching people after that, um, the system now gives a staff rank, but not all sevens, you know, number seven fits are built the same. So understanding what's important to you and ensuring that those factor combinations are there in that hiring, or if they're not, you know what you need to do to be able to support that person. So like I mentioned, if you've got a role that requires someone to be on the road and, and out there and talking to people, this pattern here with that high B and that low C is going to naturally just kind of fall into that. Um, 
if you have the inverse of that, just understand there's going to be a little bit more support that's needed there. It's not going to come as naturally. Same thing with that AC. If you've got a role that says we've got to have someone who's driving this forward, can be independent and, and not need a lot of oversight. Um, you then need to, um, if you hire that inverse, you would need to know that sometimes they're going to need um, a, a more space or freedom to make those decisions, that the driving is going to move at a different pace. And knowing if you have the capacity to take those on. So that's one place where it really matters. As we looked at some of the other ones, that BD relationship has a lot to do with teamwork and sharing in meetings. So understanding that not just the four factors are what's important, but how those factors play with each other. And then again, if you take it even a deeper level, um, each of the six factors can kind of interact with each other, but I won't overwhelm you for today. That was a lot of information. Um, again, so why it matters is knowing what is non-negotiable for you in your hiring or when you're hiring, what is it that you'll need to accommodate for and understand that. Um, so that's the end of this for today. Again, I'm going to stay on for a few minutes for questions once I stop the recording. Our next one is in February, and that's going to focus on a little bit more of the virtual meeting. So if you do have virtual teams, that would be a great one for you to um, come to. Um, these are recorded and out on the website. Um, we're a little delayed there, so I, I will get those out there. So I'll get those to the person to get them out there tomorrow. Um, so thanks, everyone, for joining. I'm going to stop the recording now.